My background has been as an engineer. I've been working on distributed systems and databases for a really long time at Facebook, where again worked on the data infrastructure stack, worked on a lot of the uh, the Apache projects that uh, were kind of taking off back then. As part of the initial team that built Hive, which is an open source SQL engine on top of uh, Hadoop. And over a five year period, as you can imagine, Facebook was like a rocket ship, right? So the kind of data that it, uh, we had to deal with. I think we moved from about 50 terabytes of data in one small cluster in 2008 to about 200 petabytes of data across multiple data centers, like all within five years. And also, Facebook was kind of getting better at its data literacy, as in there were more people trying to analyze data to do more in terms of making search better or making the news feed ranking better or making ads uh, better and things like that. And that basically meant that as a data infrastructure team, we brought it as a managed service. Uh, we had to grow kind of geometrically, right? So uh, there's more data, more processing, which meant that the systems had to grow a lot faster. So this is also around the same time that serverless computing was becoming popular, like AWS Lambda was becoming super popular. And I just started writing code to see, okay, can I leverage AWS Lambda uh, to build an end-to-end -end data infrastructure stack? So we came up with a high-level language, which looks like SQL, for data scientists to be able to build data pipelines themselves without having to worry about jobs and tasks and things like that. We have a serverless implementation. None of our customers have to really worry about whether we even get to see the data or not. So we provide a managed service, it's like SaaS, but then it's private SaaS, as in it's all of our software is running inside of our customer's VPC. The more I kind of looked at AWS Lambda, I kind of got excited about it. I just started writing code. I in fact came up with an architecture, I suggested it to these companies, and they were like, okay, this architecture looks great. Can you come join us and build it for us? And once I heard it from more than one company, I said, okay, I'll at least write it out. And uh, some of the companies said, okay, if you write it, we'll use it. And then Social Capital said, okay, here's a check. <laughs> and that's how the company was formed. I think of startups as a choose your own adventure kind of deal. Like as a founder, you're told you have like 20 or 30 different choices of anything and everything that you want to do, starting from uh, how do you incorporate to what uh, kind of corporate legal people do you want to use to uh, uh, like all of the bizarre stuff uh, to like how do you get, do you do it solo or do you do it with co-founders? Uh, my journey was more like, okay, I want something like this to exist in the world. I mean, being an engineer uh, uh, and a first-time CEO, uh, there's a bunch of blind spots. Um, so having advisors is really awesome. So uh, either your VCs or ask your VCs for other kind of technical founders uh, or technical CEOs that uh, they have in their portfolio um, and go talk to them because in some sense they speak your language a little bit. Like, uh, if you're technical and you're trying to start a company and then you're told, okay, you need to figure out the brand of your company or, like, or the voice of your company, you're going like, what does that even mean, right? So as a technical founder, uh, these are things that you'd, uh, uh, you'd have to kind of learn. And uh, again, having advisors and, uh, and, I've, and again, I've been fortunate that there have been so many kind of technical CEOs uh, who have just been willing to spend time with me not because they're going to get any, anything out of it, it's just uh, that they're paying it forward.